Welcome to the first episode of the Dave Nordahl Show. We're going to be looking at um, the 2020 Democrat hopeful whatevers. And um, uh, is this one playing? Uh, switch my mic. Okay, uh, restart to it. The streamers will get the, uh, the streamers will get the, uh, that little thing, but the, uh, the, um, podcast won't. Uh, I would like to point out, uh, that this show will be available as a podcast on Podbean and on, uh, I believe it's on iTunes too, so. So we're going to start with Elizabeth Warren. We're going to go through the Democrat uh, 2020 hopefuls and literally their insane plans. I mean, their, their plans are, are insane. Uh, before we get to that, uh, if you have a couple of bucks, you can swing my way. Go over to Patreon, Patreon slash Dave Nordahl and uh help me out uh because this channel is not monetized so your support really does help all right let's get into this let's get into elizabeth warren uh she has surged recently according to uh the latest poll she's in second place uh joe biden still has a commanding but shrinking lead and she surged into second place. So is Kamala Harris. Bernie Sanders is kind of just meh at this point. Uh, I'm not going to cover Bernie Sanders because his would take way too long. But this is from Elizabeth. But all of these people have insane, insane plans. Elizabeth Warren starts off with what will Elizabeth. And I love how all of this is. You can get the Spanish version too. What will Elizabeth Warren do? This is the fight of our lives. The fight to build an America that works for everyone, not just the wealthy. How the hell is this the fight of our lives? Like, it, 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 Grandma not take her fucking medication. Uh, end Washington corruption. Washington works great for the wealthy and well-connected, but isn't working for anyone else. Companies and wealthy individuals spend billions every year to influence Congress that's why Elizabeth has proposed the most ambitious set of anti-corruption reforms since Watergate to fundamentally change the way Washington does business. We'll start by ending lobbying as we know it, closing loopholes. Good luck. So everyone who lobbies must register, shining sunlight on their activities, banning foreign governments from hiring lobbyists, and shutting down the ability of lobbyists to move freely in and out of jobs. I believe that would be unconstitutional, lady. You can't say you can't have this job. You, 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 I don't think you can do that. Or we'll shut the revolving door between Wall Street and Washington and ban senators and congressmen from trading stocks in office and from becoming lobbyists when they retire. That's illegal. You can't tell some guy what he can and can't do with his money. Uh, we'll make justices follow a code of ethics and strengthen the code of conduct for all judges and make sure everyone gets a fair shake in courts. We'll force every candidate for federal office to put their tax returns online. Not sure what that would do. Rebuild the middle class. by 40%, uh, let's see. This means putting the, uh, for generations, people of color have been shut out of the chance to build wealth. How? You know, you can't just say stuff and hope it works. It's time for structural changes to put economic power back in the hands of the American people. That means putting the power back in the hands of workers and unions. I have news for you on unions, Elizabeth Warren. They suck. I should know. I was a member of one for many years. It also means transforming large American companies by letting their workers elect at least 40% of the company's board members. How is it legal for you and how is it moral for you to tell a private company how it, it, it is or isn't run? Give them a powerful voice on the decision about wages and outsourcing. That means the worker, 
See, this is this is what drives me nuts about senators like Elizabeth Warren who have never had to build anything. Okay, the guy at the top, the guy that owns the company. Uh, very often, do you know whose salary is the first one to go? His. How many people have started a business not taking a salary because they had to pay their employees? Uh, means a new era of strong antitrust enforcement so giant corporations can't stifle competition, depress wages, drive blah, 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 blah. Uh, the problem with the antitrust things now is how do you do it when it comes to internet companies? You can break up Amazon into 15 different fucking entities, but everybody's just going to go to Amazon. As the wealthiest nation in the world, we can make investments, create economic opportunity, address rural neglect, leg- legacy of racial discrimination. Uh, if we stop handing out tax giveaways to rich people and giant corporations, start asking people who have gained to pay their fair share. Like what? AOC's 70% tax? That includes an ultra million air tax on the 75,000 richest families to produce trillions you are you the entire gdp of the country is 19 trillion dollars the entire federal budget is 4 trillion the ultra millionaire the 75,000 richest americans already pay something like 40% of the tax burden by themselves how much more should they pay they they don't have trillions of dollars and you know the rich people don't just fucking hoard their money like scrooge mcduck they generally go out and invest it uh so see she somehow thinks this will produce trillions of dollars that can be used to build an economy that works for everyone, including universal child care, student loan debt relief. The student loan debt relief alone would be $800 billion or some enormous number like that. Uh, make down payments on a Green New Deal. The Green New Deal would cost almost $10 trillion a year. There is not enough millionaires and billionaires on the fucking planet to pay to get that tab. The GND is over half of our entire GDP. Do you want to tax half the GDP? What's left over for everyone else? And make a historic investment in housing that would bring down rents by 10% across America and create 1.5 million new jobs. And then what happens when we've built all the cheap homes? Then you're going to have a massive spike in unemployment. That's, you know. (laughs) Also, uh, the reason... We have a housing crisis in some of these cities is due to leftist Democrats not wanting anything to be built because, oh, this fungus lives there. Strengthen our democracy. Our democracy faces serious threats at home and abroad. Strengthening it will require dramatic changes. That starts with a constitutional amendment to protect the right of every American citizen to vote and to have that vote counted. We have it right now. I, I don't know what America you're living in, lady. Politicians are supposed to compete over how many votes they can persuade and how many citizens they can disqualify or demoralize. Uh, we must eliminate unnecessary, unjustified rules that make voting more difficult and overturn every single voter suppression rule that racist politicians use to steal votes from people of color. By what? Having them have a goddamn ID to vote? Last I checked, when I go to the liquor store, there are black people there. They can buy liquor just fine. They can buy cigarettes just fine. They can buy porn just fine. You need an ID to do fucking any- anything in this country. What's so wrong about them whipping it out to fucking go vote? Our democracy is not for sale. Overturn, uh, of course, she wants to overturn Citizens United. That means ending the unwritten rules uh no more donations from federal lobbyists no more donations from PACs no more billionaire super PACs uh, oh god equal justice for all under the law four words are etched about the supreme court equal justice under the law that's supposed to be a promise but today's america there's one system of justice for the rich and powerful, and another one for everyone else. It's not equal when a kid with an ounce of pot can get thrown in jail, while a bank executive who launders money for a drug cartel gets a bonus. Okay, you got to prove 
that the bank executive laundered the fucking money. The kid with the ounce of pot, yes, I don't think he should be thrown in jail. But then again, I'm for the legalization of heroin. Uh, It's not equal justice one for the exact same crimes. African Americans are more likely than whites to be arrested, more likely to be charged, more likely to be convicted, more likely to be sentenced. Are you going to address the uh, fact that women on average get less uh, jail time than men? Or don't you give a shit about that because it goes to it goes in favor of women? And once again, African Americans are 13% of the population but commit over half the violent crime. So any racial disparities in our justice, it means banning private prison, it means embracing community policing and demilitarizing our local police forces. What the hell is community policing? Is that like Neighborhood Watch? Because that's another thing I fucking hate. Uh, it means comprehensive sentencing reform and re- writing our laws to decriminalize marijuana. Okay, so she said one thing I agree with. Uh, equal justice. Uh, everybody, no matter how well connected when they break the law. That means new laws and new commitment to get to prosecuting giant corporations and their leaders. Well, okay, if we prosecute and destroy all these giant corporations, who the fuck's going to pay for all your shit? Uh, and foreign policy for all. Thank God we're almost done with this, and I got fucking more to go through. From endless wars that strain military families to trade policies that crush our middle class. Uh, that's why... Uh, Elizabeth Warren will oppose Trump's NAFTA 2.0 unless he produces a better deal for Americans working families. Um, NAFTA was the single stupidest thing we did. A strong military should act as a deterrent, so most of the time we won't have to use it. Uh, Be vigilant to the threat of terrorism. It's time to bring our troops home and make sure they get the support and benefits they've earned. Well, that's kind of going to be tough when you're giving all the fucking money to illegals. We should also leverage all the tools of our national power, not just our military might. That means cutting our bloated defense budget. Blah, blah, blah. Our strength abroad is generated here at home. Yeah. So, basically, from all her things, she wants to decriminalize pot, tax the shit out of the rich, and didn't really say a whole lot. So, next story, or next uh, one, Uh, I want to do a, you know what, I'm going to do Kamala Harris next. This is Kamala Harris. Uh, Economic justice. In America today, the cost of living is going up. Paychecks aren't. That's just not true. Uh, and the rules keeping written to benefit the big corporations and the top 1%. Once again, who the fuck? <sighs> Once again, who's going to pay for all this? Kamala believes we need to fight for working families to increase paychecks, decrease the cost of living, combat sexism, racism, and corporate favoritism in our economy to ensure every ma- American gets a fair shot. They do. Everyone has the same shot. You can build the new Amazon. The reason Amazon gets, you know, what it gets uh, is because Amazon fucking creates how many jobs? Um, working middle class are overdue uh, for uh, there. It's something about an income boost. Under a plan to reverse President Trump's trillion-dollar tax cut for big corporations and the top 1% and use that money to give a tax credit of up to six grand to working families each year. And that will kill all the gains we've made in the economy. Kamala will fight to empower unions. See, I hate this unholy alliance that Democrats have with unions. Unions are terrible. They do nothing for you. They take your money, uh, make the $15 minimum wage the national floor, create stricter penalties for companies that cheat their workers. All you'll do with a $15 an hour minimum wage is increase automation. 
Uh, she'll fight for fair wages. She'll work to constrain the rising costs that keep Americans up at night. She'll pass her Rent Relief Act to provide a tax credit for people spending 30% or more of their income on rent and utilities. She'll increase, and who the fuck's going to pay for that? She'll increase the government's investment in child care to ensure working families don't pay more than 7% of their income on care. She'll crack down on... F- so, daycares will shut down. You know, the big thing with daycares is it's, it's it's not the... It's not like the cost of, like, you know, the kid's lunch or juice or something. It's the fucking insurance they have to carry. I should know. A friend of mine, she runs a daycare. Uh, she'll crack down on pharmaceutical companies that price gouge while empowering the government to negotiate the prescription, uh, whatever. You know, the pharmaceutical companies, uh, you know, most of the innovation in medicine still happens here. We didn't get here by accident. Americans to struggle to get by because Washington leaders are not working in the interest of working people, racial and gender inequality are rampant. No, they're not. Not when you factor in the different types of work. Uh, as presidential mandate, equal pay for women. They already have this. Where is this fucking lie that women don't get equal pay? If companies could get away with paying women less, no guy would get a fucking job. Uh, she's been apparently waging this fight in time in her career. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, raising teachers pay. Oh, yes, we must raise the teacher's pay. It's not that they're the most overpaid motherfuckers on the planet. The United States is facing a teacher pay crisis. Public school teachers earn 11%. Then similarly educated professionals. What? I I, I don't get that. Teachers, whatever. Teachers are more likely than non-teachers to work a second job. Yeah, because they have fucking three months off in which they can double dip while getting paid on their teaching gig. Uh, In 30 states, the average teacher pay is less than the living wage for a family of four. Oh, my fucking God. It's a part-time job. How much money should it get? And I think the lowest... I think I researched this and I think the lowest was Mississippi and I believe it was like 40 grand. That that's that's a living wage for a family of 4. You're doing nothing for 3 months. Get a second job. Uh her plan will provide public school teacher a 13.5 uh thir- whatever, a $13,000 raise. Oh, my God, how much more fucking money must... And who the fuck's going to pay for that? Paying teachers, their full value of their work isn't a good strategy to improve education. It's central to building an economy that works for working people. Research shows that attracting and retaining, blah, 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 improves student performance, increases graduation. It doesn't fucking matter how good the teachers are. They can't fucking... They can't fucking overcome the issue of parents not giving a shit. So, once again, just print money. Combat the climate crisis. I'm going to start skipping around. Uh, uh, Kamala knows we need to take on big oil companies to win this fight, and that's exactly what she's done throughout her career, defending California's climate law california is falling apart to suing corporations like chevron for damage to the environment uh she stood up to the uh special interest in one uh this isn't just a fight against something it's a fight that it's a fight for something the climate threat is great and so is our opportunity with the american ingenuity and imagination we can forge a green new deal that will cost 97 trillion dollars we can't afford it. The Green New Deal is a pipe dream. We can build a clean economy that creates good paying jobs for the future. How? The backbone of our economy is carbon and gasoline. That's not going to change no matter how much you want it to. Okay, let's just let's just say this. I did some research and an electric semi-truck 
would have to be recharged. I can only find one example, and it's from Tesla. Oh, by the way, it costs two hundred fifty thousand dollars, but it has to be recharged after five hundred miles. It takes two hours to charge the fucking truck. How is shipping going to work? It t- the the only affordable electric car is the uh, Chevy Volt or whatever the fuck it is. And that takes two to three hours to charge. It only gets 150 miles before it has to charge. Also, most of the leftists that support this crap live in cities. If you live in the city, decent chance you fucking don't have a garage. What, are we going to install charging stations every 10 feet? Ugh. Uh, modernizing our transportation, energy, and water infrastructure. It means accelerating the spread of electric vehicles, solar panels, and wind turbines. The amount of wind turbines we would need to pull this off to meet our power supply needs is approximately, I I did the math in this one. Basically, I don't think we have enough space for them. You guys... You're, you're, the only option you have is is uh, is nuclear. Uh, uh, where am I? Uh, Carbon free future. That's impossible. Maybe in twenty. Maybe in fifty years. Kamala created the first ever environmental justice unit in a San Francisco in San Francisco as a DA. That's why, as Attorney General. Uh, Harris sued corporations for exploiting, exposing residents to high level of diesel. Uh, as the president should continue to that work by restoring environmental and public health protections rolled back by Trump, building a future. Do, do any of these sound like they have a snowball's chance in fucking hell of beating Trump? I mean, do they? Uh, check my. Make it, all right. Uh, we fight to establish our economies, protect communities at home, reestablish, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's go to action on gun violence. Gun violence is a national epidemic and public health emergency. In 2017, nearly 40,000 people were killed by guns in America. Most of those were suicides. Something like only like 8,000 of them were murder. Also, are you going to bother to deal with the 200 to 300 to 400,000 people that die of obesity? Or are we just going to ignore that? We're not waiting for good ideas. We have good ideas. We're not waiting for another tragedy. We've seen the worst. Uh, Washington having the courage to stand up to the MRA. We can't wait. We're not waiting any longer. If Congress fails to send comprehensive gun safety legislation to Kamala's desk within... The first 100 days, including universal background checks. Oh, my God. Kamala, have you ever bought a fucking gun? You go through a background check. Okay? An assault weapons ban. We already have one. The AR-15 is not a fucking assault rifle, no matter how much you want it to be. I don't get, like, an assault weapons ban. I can't go buy a fucking AK-47 legally. Uh, repeal the NRA's corporate gun manufacturer immunity, immunity shield. She'll take executive actions to keep our kids and communities safe. Do you mean the immunity shield that gun manufacturers can't be sued if somebody goes nuts and shoots up a McDonald's? Yeah, that's not the fucking goddamn manufacturer's fault. Can I sue the car company if, uh, if, if, if I get hurt? Like, do you sue car companies for accidents? Also, of the 40,000, how many people died from car accidents last year? Do we, do we sue alcohol companies if our liver blows up? Uh, she mandate most comprehensive federal background checks in history. Revoke the license of gun manufacturers that break the law. Close the boyfriend loophole to make it harder for domestic abusers. The problem with domestic abuse is uh, people lie. Reverse his uh, decision to allow fugitives from justice to purchase gun, ban 
the importation of an AR-15 style assault weapons. Of course, we have to go after the AR-15. In addition to enacting uh, universal background check, renewing the ban, uh, repealing immunity, uh, high capacity, uh, Kamala will fight to make gun trafficking a federal crime. What do you mean by trafficking? I think gun trafficking is a crime already. Ban high capacity magazines. You have to you have to get specific about what that is. And again, that is pretty much useless. Um. Because it takes approximately two and a half seconds to change a magazine. Uh, prohibit those convicted of a federal hate crime from buying guns. <sighs> They're already convicted of a fucking felony. They can't buy guns in the... Uh, whatever. But do any of these sound like they have a snowball's chance in hell of winning? Or is this just a bunch of lunatics fucking... Uh, desperately trying to, uh, uh, desperately just, you know, swinging. And of course we go through LGBTQ equality, debt free and student college. We spend how much money on school? Who's going to pay for all this? Uh, She addressed the LGBT hate crime units. Uh, Kamala Kamala was marrying same-sex couples at City Hall. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, She uh, tried to get... She abolished the gay and transgender panic defense in trials where they used... Generally, when the panic defense is used, that means that, like... Somebody's making out with a trans person and they didn't know they were trans and suddenly they got their, they got a big old floppy wiener in their hand and they freak out a little bit. Again, if you're trans, I would highly, highly advise, I don't give a shit how many blue haired activists on Twitter say, if you say you're a woman, you're a woman, you probably should mention, uh, Hey dude, I'm on a date with, yeah, I got a dick. Uh, she refused to defend California's discriminatory Prop 8 in court. By the way, Democrats, this is maybe why you don't want everything down to a popular vote. Uh, as senator, she led the charge against his anti-LGBTQ judicial nominees. Well, none of Trump's fucking anti-gay, uh, judges have done, they've done exactly jack and shit. On gay marriage, it's still the law of the land. They haven't even heard a... President Trump flew the fucking rainbow flag. Like, you know, Tim Pool made a video on his channel where he said the the Democrat Party is dead. Or it's dying. The left is dead. They've completely fractured. They have a civil war going on between AOC and Pelosi. Meanwhile, the right is gobbling up the center. Like, I'm a centrist, but I can't support any of these people. Uh, She'll fight for the Equality Act to provide uh, the community with explicit and comprehensive protection from discrimination in all facets of life. They already are protected. What more do you want? Including employment, schools, and public accommodations. Uh, it is already illegal to discriminate in public accommodation. We already have this. Most jobs are at will employment. If you had an actual job and didn't weren't just an elected official that can't be fired, you'd understand this. I can be fired at the drop of a hat and I'm a cis straight white male, you know, the devil incarnate. Uh, she'll immediately reinstate Obama's executive actions to protect federal workers and prohibit discrimination by federal contractors in federally funded housing programs and by hospitals participating in Medicaid and Medicare. While I don't think gay people have a problem with going to the fucking doctor, but as for trans people, yeah, one of the things is, you know, doctors may have an issue 
by helping someone mutilate themselves. And considering that the post-surgery suicide rate is the exact same as the no suicide rate for trans, because, you know, they're living a lie, maybe, maybe permanent mutilating surgery is not the way to go anyway. Uh, Trump administration rules that allow individuals to use their religious beliefs as a justification to discriminate against LG. Oh my God. If a cake baker doesn't want to bake a fucking cake, he doesn't have to bake the cake. Tell the two fucking cock sucking gay dudes to go and fucking go into, go to another bakery. Uh, they don't just face discrimination too often in America. They face violence as well. How? Where? The last time I checked, for the entire year, eight trans people have been killed. Meanwhile, there's been like three, 2,000 regular people. There is not this epidemic of violence against them. It's just numbers do not bear this out. Uh, we must fight for equality around the globe by making rights an, inter- uh, an integral part of our foreign policy approach. This starts with America living by the values we preach. On day one, she will reverse President Trump's immoral ban on transgender service members. Do you, Kamala Harris, have you ever fucking read what you can be disqualified from service for? It's a laundry list. Guys with undescended testicles can't serve. Diabetics can't serve. Uh, fucking uh, anybody with a chronic condition can't serve. People with flat feet can't serve. But, oh no, he said, well, maybe transgenders ain't exactly suited just due to the fact that they need constant medical care that the military can't guarantee they can get. But, once again, that's just, that's just mean. A fair and just, uh, Jesus Christ. Oh, gender equality. Then I'll get, I'll do, uh. And then I'll do uh, the immigration because that's the big one. All right. Uh, President Trump has denigrated and demeaned women. When? Where? What What rules? Like, what law did he, did he pass? Did, uh, I must have been asleep when Trump signed the don't wear fucking clothes law. His rollback campus sexual assault protections... No, Title IX was basically a thing where if a a girl accuses a guy of raping her in college, he's led into a kangaroo court and he has to prove his innocence. The assumption, he's, he's assumed guilty, he's brought into a kangaroo court, and then he loses his academic career on nothing more than her good word, which is bullshit. Gutted the equal pay rules designed to prevent discrimination. It is still illegal to pay women less. Women work less. That's why they earn less. We don't have a fucking wage gap. We have a goddamn earnings gap. Uh, import, uh, appointed Supreme Court justices intent on overturning Roe v. Wade. Well, they're taking their sweet ass time to do it. Uh, the stakes of ne- and also a lot of women want Roe v. Wade overturned. So I don't get. Why this is just men. Uh, Kamala is ready to take the fight to Donald Trump. Kamala has fought for women and girls by making sure daddy is not home. As a new lawyer, she specialized prosecuting individuals charged with sexually assaulting children as the DA. Uh, I think a district attorney... In Mississippi, would probably want a sexual a guy who sexually assaulted a child prosecuted. Uh, blah 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 blah. You know, I don't really see a whole lot of policy. Uh, for Kamala protect. Uh, she'll nominate judges that respect Roe v. Wade, roll back dangerous and discriminatory. Ter- discriminatory rules put into in by President Trump to limit access to contraception. How did he do that? 
Oh, my God. And once again, while I don't give a rat's ass if a woman has an abortion or not, or not why in the hell should I be incumbent to pay for it? Uh, in America, the risk of death for pregnancy is related causes for black women is three to four times higher than for white women. That's because they don't get their prenatal care. Also, the reason that that rate is climbing is partially thanks to feminism. Feminism told young ladies to not get married, to not have babies in their 20s, but instead wait till they got their career and blah, blah, blah. So they're in their 40s when they have their first kid. And yes, the risk does go up, but here's the thing. Out of 100,000 births, only only about 18 times, the rate is 18 women die for every 100,000 women who give birth and live. I'm very sorry, but that's a pretty good number. Oh my God. Uh, Kamala will fight for women's economics right by mandating equal pay. Oh my God, it, 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 it's already mandated. It's illegal to pay a woman less than a man for the same job. The problem is the women do not work like the men do. Men work most of the overtime. Men work most of the dangerous jobs. Men are more willing to spend all goddamn night at the fucking office. Hell, even the women, even opening up your own business, women and men do it for different reasons. Men do it to make as much money as humanly possible. Women do it so they can work the schedule they want to work, which is usually less. I'm very sorry. If if it was true that that a company has a man and a woman and they know they got to pay they can pay the woman 25% less than the man, why the fuck would they hire the man? Also, women do not negotiate their salaries. They don't ask for raises. Well, you're not going to get anything if you don't ask for it. So I'm really sorry, but no, they already have equal fucking pay. Unless you want to have every company be forced to take all the employees' earnings into one big pot and then distribute it equally, and how the fuck is that fair? You ha- we have an earnings gap, but it's explained away easily. Oh, my God. Another issue impacting women that's often overlooked and ignored in the conversation is gun safety. More than one million women in America today have been shot or shot by an intimate partner. We There's like 160 million of them. That's less than 1%. Uh, 92% of all women killed with guns in high income countries are killed in the United States. Yeah. Most of, and most of the 92 are suicides. What the fuck are you going to do to stop that? Also, would you prefer they got killed by knives? All right. But you know what's amazing in this whole thing? I haven't heard a like a plan. All right. Um Let's go with race, uh, racial justice. Kamala believes you can't have racial justice until you have economic justice. Black families own $5 of wealth for every $100 of their white counterparts. And nearly a third of Native American children live in poverty. Latinas are paid 53 cents. They aren't Oh, my God. A Latino doctor will make the exact same amount of money as a white doctor. It's just usually Jose is the goddamn janitor. Kamala's lift act, uh, the largest tax cut for working Americans in a generation. We begin to tackle these inequalities and provide relief to one and two Americans. Uh, so what, are you just going to give tax cuts to black and Latinos and uh, because you can't give them to Asians, because notice she's not mentioning fucking Asians here, because they're out hurting me. So, uh, uh, we must recognize the years of intentional segregation and discriminatory lending practices. Uh, I believe it's been, a, I believe it's been the thing, the rule in America for a while now that you can live wherever the fuck you want to live. 
But isn't it odd that your le- that your leftists are the ones that are calling for segregation because they're constantly bitching about gentrification? Okay, uh, black and Hispanic households are twice as likely to rent today as white household. Kamala's Rent Relief Act would provide family, and who's going to pay for that? Uh, should our kids decide to uh, blah, blah, blah? What the fuck is this? Okay, free college. Uh, healthcare system, black women are three to four times more likely to, yeah, because do you know what's also, do you know what's also a, uh, a thing is obesity and it hits this community harder. That's like one of the big, (sighs) Jesus. Okay. Let's go to the next candidate. Oh, my God. Okay, but before I get to the next one, I do want to tackle this story. Rosie O'Donnell says Joe Biden should drop out of the race for president. He's not the future of the Democratic Party. Well, what is, dear Rosie? People like AOC are going to make damn sure that, uh, you know, uh, that make damn sure no Democrat gets elected again. I mean, the Democrats are literally in for what I think is basically a shellacking in 20, in 2020. Uh, during an appearance on Kumio primetime, the comedian and TV personality cited the 76 year old former VP age and ideas as the reasons she'll be backing Someone else for the nomination. I think Joe Biden should say, I'm going to sit this one out. I'm going to be an elder statesman. I'm going to advise. And then whoever the nominee is, I think, uh, blah, blah, blah. He's not the few. Uh, O'Donnell's preferred candidates are Warren, who I just ripped apart. She doesn't have a plan. And, of course, Kamala Harris. What a shock. The Dyke supporting two ladies. And you do know that in just about every poll these days, Biden beat or Trump beats both of them. Like. You have Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris saying they want to decriminalize illegal borders, illegal border crossings. Congratulations. You just lost Vermont or you just lost Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, like these i oh my god so biden who took office in 73 blah 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 for comparison warren is 70 harris is 54 and trump is 73 i trump is biden is your best bet to beat trump i mean i know they say fucking don't interrupt your enemy when they're making a mistake, but Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, lady, but uh, she was there to promote the lights for liberty. Hundreds of vigils that will be held around the country to protest the treatment of immigrants at the United States border. Once again, this border issue is not going to go away, and it's a losing argument for you people. Oh, my God. But let's get to Joe's vision of America. Now, he is actually, uh, he has some, like, plan, I guess. But, and thankfully, he's the, uh, he's the shortest. So, restoring the basic bargain for American workers. The federal minimum wage is set to 15 bucks an hour. We should stop companies from classifying low-wage workers as managers in order to avoid paying them the overtime they've earned. Well, the workers don't have to accept the promotion now, do they? Stop Republicans' attempts to strip workers' rights from rights to form unions and collectively bargain. 
They have not had the ability to form unions. What the Republicans are fighting is the is is for right to work, which means compulsory union membership is no longer a thing, which I think is a good thing. You shouldn't be forced to join a union to get a job. And let me tell you something. The reason unions have largely lost and the only reason the only unions that mean a damn thing are the ones you're forced to the barrel of a gun to join are the only ones that are still relevant is because nobody wants unions anymore they had their time they were good for a little bit but largely they just take your money and they give you nothing in return uh, we need to put an end to blah, 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 blah. Uh, unnecessary occupational licensing requirements. Why do I think that is a Democrat thing? Every American education is the heart of the American dream. Essential for the United States can be globally in the decades to come. Every American should have the opportunity throughout their lives to obtain skills, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so basically free college. How the fuck are we going to pay for that? Uh, the reason, uh, Barack Obama, the ACA was the single worst piece of fucking legislation this country has had. And you rammed it through when you had a goddamn super majority. And it, it's just, it's, it's not that <sighs> Americans like the idea for it. Then we got the bill for it. When our premium started to, you know, skyrocket. Give every American the right to choose a public option like Medicare. Well, during the debates, you'd said you'd just get rid of private insurance. Or was that Kamala Harris anyway? Whatever. Uh, uh, but for the fact they've been denied access by governors and state legislature of a feud... Refer, refuse the ACA's Medicaid expansion. We must ensure blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, we're just going to have Medicare for all, and it'll cost approximately $2.5 trillion a year. Uh, let's see. Something about the Green New Deal. Uh, hmm. Excuse me. Uh, prioritize prevention. Eliminate racial disparities. Get rid of sentencing practices that don't fit the crime. Uh, this is for his thing. Make sure formerly incarcerated individuals have served their sentence are able to fully pollen. Uh, this is not too bad. Uh, rewarding work, not just wealth. Well, wealth is the reward of work. Reversing President T Trump's tax cuts, which is what jump-started the economy and gave us this unprecedented uh, state of growth. So, yeah, let's just t dump that. We need to eliminate special tax breaks that reward special interests. Fine, fair enough. We need to get rid of the capital gains loophole for multimillionaires. Warren Buffett said it best. He should not pay a lower rate than his secretary. But I guarantee you he pays in a one whole hell of a lot more than his secretary does. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is the immigration policy. Our immigration system is broken, and for years we have lacked the political will to fix it. We can secure our border and enforce our laws without tossing aside our values. Well, then talk to your goddamn Democrat buddies that voted no on the fucking spending bill. Putting people in cages, your boss did that. Carrying children away from their parents isn't the answer. Your boss did it, and he didn't say shit then when you were the fucking VP. So you didn't give a shit. When Trump's doing it, he's evil, he's mean, he's terrible. Uh, but when Obama's doing the same damn thing and drone striking motherfuckers... That's just fine. Uh, we've got to address the root causes of migration that push people to leave behind their homes and everything they know to undertake a dangerous, dangerous journey. Yeah, because of your free government gibbs. Let me reload this. Hold up a second. I'm having some slight technical difficulties here. Uh, at the
the same time, blah, blah, blah. Legal immigration is an incredible source of strength for the country. Yeah. But why don't you worry about, you know. Okay. Let's go to, we've got to ensure this democracy includes everyone. Protecting the right to vote. <sighs> Voting is the purest, most fundamental act of citizenship. Efforts to disenfranchise eligible voters are not just un-American now as they were during Jim Crow. We must strengthen our democracy by guaranteeing that every American votes is protected. We got to make it easier. Blah, 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 blah. We make sure we count every voter's voice. We do. We must protect our voting booths and voter rolls from foreign powers who seek to undermine our democracy. Um, once again, I don't see the problem with a voter ID law. Um, once again, everyone in this country seems to not have a problem buying fucking liquor. So that's Joe's vision. Um, honestly, it's the most centrist of them all, but it's, it's almost like he, he doesn't have, like, he's just kind of like the doddering old man, like, uh, Bernie Sanders was. All right, I'm going to take a quick bathroom break, and I will be back. Okay, we are back, and let's pull up the, uh, I've, all right, uh, let's do Pete Buttigieg, Pete Booty, and honestly, do, does any of these seem like they can actually beat Trump? Like he's there. I think the Democratic Party is just fuck it. Let them say whatever they want. We're not beating him anyway. Now, I wasn't going to cover Pete because to be the uh, to be honest, I, I didn't want to get anybody in here that has like zero point five or one percent. I didn't bother to to do Andrew Yang either because he's just gonna. He's, he's not going to make it. Uh, I Right now, Warren is surging. Harris is surging. And so is this guy. Um, I think he's the gay dude. Anyway, um, let's see what he wants to do. Uh, freedom. Threats to our freedom come not just from the government, but from corporations with too much power. 
or economic and social conditions that undermine freedoms of individuals, our visions of freedom, uh, blah, 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 whatever, health care. Medicare for all who want it is a pathway to Medicare for all. So the destruction of private prisons and just tacking on another, oh, I don't know, $2.5 trillion in spending every goddamn year. Or, or would it be, was it 2.5 or, yeah, it just, it would double the fucking budget. Like, how in the hell are we going to pay for this? So basically, uh, if you're uninsured, you're paying too much. If you're insured, you're still paying too much. The burdens, uh, hardworking families, especially in communities of color, other developed countries provide universal coverage for less than what Americans currently pay. Okay, I pay like $10 a week for my insurance. It's not that fucking much. Um, so I don't fucking get that. And, um, those countries that have the, have the whole socialist, uh, thing, uh, their quality of care is less. They have longer wait times. They have fewer doctors because nobody wants to fucking do the incredibly hard job of being a doctor while, to be brutally honest, while not getting paid shit. Most medical innovation still comes out of the United States. Uh, Pete uh, supports uh, Medicare for all through a pathway, blah, 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 blah. Improve health equity, invest in material or maternal and infant health, lower drug prices, make long-term care affordable, invest in resources in mental health, blah, blah, blah. Debt-free college. We already spend how much money in education, but fuck it. Confront student loan debt. So if you've already paid your debt back, well, fuck you. Provide more supports for students in entering public service. Ensure the highest degree of transparency and accountability for education and blah, blah, blah. Strict standards to the for-profit higher education. Oh, my God. You, you do know that colleges... You do know that your Democratic predecessors, specifically Bill Clinton, caused this. College used to be fairly affordable. But then Bill Clinton said every kid needs to go to college. And so he made fucking loans that nobody could be denied. So, of course, the college and they could take out hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the fucking... Colleges just kept jacking up the prices. He didn't set a cap. Now you just want to make it free? Oh boy, that'll help. Uh, let's see. This is for infrastructure. Major investment in clean water, wastewater infrastructure, transportation, blah, blah, blah. Infrastructure is the center of well-being. Our infrastructure is crumbling. Communities of color are disproportionately hurt because, of course, they fucking are. Meanwhile, people living in a trailer park in West Virginia are just fucking fine. Uh, un investments in infrastructures can unlock good jobs, drive economic growth, importantly empower communities to better access recreation, work, and health, connecting people to opportunity and to one another people leaves in the need for major federal investment in our nation's infrastructure. And once all that shit's done, then what? Massive unemployment? Uh, let's see. This is what he wants to do for uh, consumer protection. Strict like regulations on predatory lenders. You mean like payday loans? Well, that will... Uh, disproportionately affect communities of color. So now I don't like payday loans, but then again, the, the people that get them, get them with their eyes open. These are not children. These are adults. You willingly signed the fucking loan. Strengthen antitrust standards. I'm assuming you're talking about companies like Amazon. 
The problem is antitrust laws, quite frankly, I don't think can touch them. Because how the fuck do you bust up Amazon? Everybody will still, everybody will still just go to Amazon. It's like busting up YouTube. Everybody's just going to bust it. Everybody's still going to fucking YouTube. Like, I, I, I don't know how you bust up an internet company. It's, it's not like Target, where you can just say, okay, Target has a 1,000 stores. 250 are Target, 250 are Zippies, 250 are, are, are uh, Dickies, and 250 are Clitties. Uh, protect your rights over your own data. Talk to Facebook about that. Re- revive the consumer financial protections. What the f- uh, fight big, fight big data discrimination. Yeah, because it seems to affect your political opponents a little bit more. Uh, racial justice. Black Americans were enslaved. No one, none of them alive today were ever enslaved, nor their parents, nor their grandparents, nor their great grandparents. And then systematically excluded from full full citizenship through laws, which ended approximately 70 years ago. Uh, Sanction, discrimination, the effects are ongoing. Uh, Americans must enter a new era that promotes political, economic, social equity, in part by specifically reversing the harms of racist policy and practices. Well, you'll have to... Tell me what I don't I'm not going to read the fucking Douglas plan. Invest in entrepreneurship and home ownership. There are these places that are called banks. If you would like to start a business, go there or you could be like a millennial and try to crowdfund it. Also, the only thing affecting black people from getting homes is one thing. It's called their credit rating. Eliminate health disparities, including maternal and infant health. If the mom does not go to the doctor to get her prenatal checkups, uh, what the fuck are you supposed to do? Also, if the mom is a big fat slob, which makes pregnancy more complicated, what the fuck are you, what, what, outside of man, outside of mandating that she not eat? Defend affirmative action and combat the opportunity gap. Affirmative action is racist. It's just that it's racist against white people and Asians, so you people don't give a fuck. Protect and expand voting rights. Everybody has the right to vote, provided they're not a felon. I do not know what is so hard about voting. It's just they don't want to vote. Or they can't find enough volunteers to run a polling place in their areas. They got to go to another area. But... You can, you can legally leave work to go vote, okay? And polling places are open from like 8 a.m. to like 10 p.m. at night, I think. I could be wrong on that, but that's all day. It takes fucking 15 minutes to vote. And if you're in line at 10, if you're in line at 10.01, you still get to vote. Uh, so support self-determination of indigenous populations. They already have it. Redress inequality in our criminal justice system. Like what? Are you going to say that women now have to start saving the, serving the exact same sentences as men? Oh, wait, no, of course you're not going to say that. Dismantle the prison industrial complex and end the crisis of mass incarceration. Tell people to quit breaking laws and they won't go to prison. Create a commission to propose reparation policies. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah, yeah, reparations for people that were never a slave. Investing in our teachers. Oh, yippee. Federal support for higher teacher pay. They're already overpaid. They work a part-time job, and the fucking lowest pay I could find was, like, in Mississippi, it was like 42 grand for a job they worked seven months out of the year. (sighs) 
The school, uh, we need to, let's see, we need, uh, okay, we need to respect and value our teachers as the essential public servants they are. No, they're not. And we need to compensate them accordingly. We need federal support for boosting teachers' pay. We need to begin by directing it to Title I schools, the schools with the most economic and racial in inequity. And with the most students on free and reduced price lunches. Okay. You can throw money at this problem all fucking day long. It doesn't matter. If the if the kid gets home and he's living with his mom and his three other siblings and all of them have different daddies and the mom doesn't give a shit if he gets his homework done or not or if he fucking uh, just watches TV all damn night. It doesn't matter. You can throw money at this till the fucking cows come home. It's not a money problem. It's a it's a parenting problem. There there's a reason why Asians are out earning white people. Uh, let's see. Gender equity. Freedom means that your opportunities aren't limited because of your gender. Pay transparency. The United States should pass a new Law publicly reporting a simple annual statistic for every large company. For every dollar paid to men, how much less did women make? Oh, my God. The woman made less because she worked less. Okay. That's why women typically bring home less bacon. The man worked more. Companies that don't hire, pay, and promote women fairly will need to explain themselves and change. So, I have two candidates. The man's the qualified one, but because I I have a government gun to my head, I have to hire the woman. That's bullshit. Don't tell me how to run my fucking company. On its way back to enact paycheck fairness, it would make it more difficult for employers to hide unfair pay practices. Uh, that is already illegal. Once again, unless you just want to take everybody's earnings, put it in a big pot and divvy it all out, uh, which is bullshit, uh, remove the deadline for and support the Equal Rights Amendment. Believe it or not, the president has nothing to do with the amendments and it's never going to get passed. Strengthen anti-discrimination protections against gender and sexual identity-based discrimination. Strengthen protections for pregnant women. Uh, look, if I'm hiring for a job and I know the chick's pregnant, that is something to think about because I know I'm going to lose her in a few, in a few months. So what, should I be forced to be uh, at the barrel of a gun to hire somebody? I know I'm going to have to hire somebody else. And then what am I supposed to do when she comes back? Say to the guy, well, sorry, fuck you. A woman should have the freedom to make medical decisions uh, on, her, uh, uh, on her own or with the counsel of her doctor, family, and faith leaders. Uh, the government's role should be to make sure all women have access to comprehensive, affordable care. That includes preventative care, contraceptive. Again, I don't give a shit if a woman has a fucking abortion, but why should I have to pay it for it? What is wrong with her paying for it? Now, you can make an argument if it was my fucking baby gravy that helped start the problem. But. uh, But if I had nothing to do with it, why should I have to pay for it? Organized labor. No, there's a reason why unions have generally fallen out of favor, and it's because they suck. Okay, finally, we're at the end of Pete. I think. Pass safe schools le- legislation, improve the health and well being of LGBTQ youth, parents, and family, and combat bullying and harassment. Good luck. Protect LGBTQ. As- okay, so protect those asylum seekers. Okay, here's the problem everybody crossing the border is going to suddenly go gay. Uh, combat the overrepresentation and mistreatment of LGBT people in the criminal justice system? Uh, I don't think they're overrepresented in the criminal justice system. 
I, I, but once again, if they didn't do, if they didn't commit a crime, they won't have to worry about that. Support uh, human rights around the world. I can do that all day long. The problem is, is I don't think places like Iran are going to listen. And of course, it would uh, it would reverse the trans military ban for military service, despite the fact that fucking we have a laundry list of people who can't serve in the military for one reason or another. In fact, if you're a male and you're under five feet, they don't let you serve because you're too damn short. Okay, uh, let's okay, let's go with immigration. Pass comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, more in, uh, the greatest nation in the world should have nothing to fear from children fleeing violence. They're not fleeing violence. More importantly, children fleeing violence should have nothing to fear from the greatest nation in the world. We must remember that immigrants are an essential part of our American story. Okay, so all these kids come in. We can't turn them away because they're fleeing, fe- fleeing violence. What the fuck are we supposed to do with them? Who's going to pay for that? Immigration creates strong families and communities who contribute to our economic... Yeah, legal ones. A pathway to citizenship uh, for immigrants living, working, paying taxes, and contributing to our American story. What about the ones who came here illegally, work, but get paid under the table so they don't pay taxes? Uh, Most Americans support such a passage. Whatever. Let's see what this... uh, Modernized laws and fa- the family separation crisis. Evaluate ICE and CBP practices to ensure similar humanitarian crisis never happened. The crisis happened, dear Pete, because people like AOC kept saying no money, no money, no money, not one dollar, not one dollar, not one dollar, not one dollar. Until literally because they had no money, you had a crisis. And then she threw a fucking temper tantrum when she got overruled and didn't get her way in the fucking house. Reinstate enforcement priorities and prevent arbitrary targeting of immigrant communities by enforcement officials. They're only targeting the illegal ones. The legal ones have nothing to fear from ICE. Okay, common sense gun laws. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Close the boyfriend loophole to disarm domestic abusers. Hold the gun industry accountable. Do we hold the butter industry accountable for the obesity crisis? Ban military-style assault weapons. You mean like the semi-automatic AR-15, which is by no means a military-grade weapon? Establish a nationwide gun licensing system. I don't know what the fuck a gun licensing system is, but it sounds stupid and good luck in this this nation because you also have to deal with states' rights. Invest in evidence-based urban gun violence intervention programs proven to work. Like what? Like, seriously, like what? Of course, he wants to raise it to 15 bucks an hour, the minimum wage. Extend pay and benefit protections to uncovered workers. Invest in high-quality child care and early child. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Let's see. National affordable housing investment and protections for tenants' rights. Families can't be secure if the cost of housing means they can't make ends meet or live in fear of being evicted or losing their home. Well, if you don't pay the rent, what exactly is the landlord supposed to do? Just let you stay there? Why would anyone pay the rent? Which leaves the landlord with no money to pay the taxes. Then he gets in trouble. Uh, We must have act in affordable housing for working families. Well, the reason the rents are so fucking high is thanks to politicians like you. Reform unnecessary land use rules that prevent affordable housing construction. You might want to talk to your Democratic buddies in, like, California. Redress the history of housing discrimination against communities of color. Once again, that's their credit score. Nothing more. Okay. uh, End homelessness for families with children. Okay. So if you're homeless and you have a kid, whether it's yours or not, 
What, we're just going to give you a free house? Uh, yeah, how are we going to pay for that? Uh, fund uh, and invest affordable housing construction expands protections for tenants against eviction and unjust harassment. Uh, let's see what he has for democracy, voting rights. Uh, introduce automatic voter registration. Expand early voting. Restore voting rights for the formerly incarcerated. Institute voting by mail. Okay, we have a pro. You talk about election security, but you want to do it through the mail. How would we make sure that those are legit votes and not just one fat guy in Alabama? Filling out about 57 fucking voting uh, things. Make election day a holiday. It takes 15 minutes to vote. You don't need all goddamn day. Protect birthright citizenship. Uh, Provide access for people with disabilities. They already do. Okay. They, They already do. What do you think? If somebody's in a wheelchair, they're like, nope, fuck you. Protect voting rights on tribal lands and ensure an and accurate and depoliticized census count. Yeah, by adding the fucking cent- or by adding the fucking citizenship question. Uh, let's see what he says about the Electoral College, then I'm gonna move on. A national of course he wants to replace the Electoral College vote. With a national popular vote, which you can only do uh, by two-thirds of the House, two-thirds of the Senate, and 75% of the states have to ratify it. You are never going to get it, because if we had a popular vote, literally California, Chicago, and New York would decide our friggin' elections. You're never going to get 75% of the states to say, yep. And I guarantee you this interstate compact is going to blow up in somebody's face, especially when Trump most likely wins the popular vote this next time around. All right. I, but once again, Do any of these candidates sound fucking presidential? Now, I was going to do Maureen Williams' uh, site because, oh my God, it is, it is laughably bad. She's the, but she really doesn't have, uh, she really doesn't have uh, that, that much support. She's only got one, but no wonder the Democrats or the Republicans want to keep uh, uh, no wonder Republicans want to keep her in because holy shit. All right. Um, speaking of Chicago, have this little story right here. The Chicago mayor permanently bans ICE from accessing police databases ahead of raids. Now. I did a video a couple of days ago on the Chicago mayor and basically Chicago is broke. Uh, it needs to come up with, I think two billion or a billion dollar to fund its public pensions. Dear mayor, maybe you should get rid of the illegals not paying any taxes and sucking on the already taxed, uh, the already taxed, you know, free government gibbs. Anyway, um, the police department database is ahead of the looming ICE raids detained undocumented immigrants. Uh, Chicago police will not team up with ICE to detain any resident, the mayor said after a meeting with business leader and immigration rights advocates. Uh, they're not going to be facilitating or otherwise providing any assistance in any raids. Okay, then let's cut Chicago's federal funding. Uh, we have cut off ICE. I, again, I don't know how this is legal. Um, ICE officials plan to launch nationwide raids as soon as the weekend. 
as soon as this weekend there were thousands of immigrants, the federal government has ordered to deported. The two-week clock is up. The president had given Lightfoot, said Wednesday, we've heard some notion it may start again, blah, blah, blah. Chicago will always be a welcoming city and never tolerate ISIS tearing our families apart. Well, maybe if the families didn't come here illegally, ICE wouldn't have to do that. Now, would they? All right. So if you're watching me live, we're going to go on for a little bit longer. But if you're on the podcast, this is where this ends for you. Okay. So. All right. What else do I got? Okay, this is the last thing I'm going to look at. This is from Refuse Fascism, you know, the anti-Trump group that's like, in the name of humanity. So let's look at this quick little video. When your government is putting immigrants and children in cages, banning abortion outright... Uh, they're not putting immigrants in cages. They're putting illegal immigrants in cages. And as for the abortion thing, uh, a lot of women voted for that. Destroying Tr- Trump had nothing to do with it. It was a state vote, you dumbass. Oh, shit. the ecosystems of this planet should you do nothing or will you do the right thing uh i'm going to keep in power the re- the regime who has led us to the best economic uh, growth we've ever had eight members of refuse fascism and the revolution club no november for it begins blocked the 101 freeway twice with a 50-foot banner which read Trump Pence regime must go this was yeah that's illegal you have every right to protest in this country but you don't have the right to do this you're lucky that we're Americans and we're nice in other countries these people would have been run down in a second have you seen drivers in Israel Jesus was a call from refused fascism for millions to drive out this regime. Five are on trial now at the Metro Court. The- and they should be. They You can't break the fucking law. Anti-terrorism division of the LAPD admits sending an infiltrator into refused fascism meetings at a church to secretly record this movement. LA- well, let's see. Right now... You are blocking people from getting to work. That's bullshit. City Attorney Mike Fuhrer is out to criminalize and silence dissent. Call L.A. City Attorney Mike Fuhrer's office to say no way. When is enough enough? Come to Metro Court on Hill in Washington, 6th floor in downtown L.A. to support. Uh, no. And what am I supposed to do? This is illegal. (laughs) I mean, these people are lucky they didn't get run over. Support the defendants and get involved in the defense committee. For more info, call Refuse Fascism at 323-946-1... No, I don't want to call crazy people. ...742. When you're... Okay. And I think... that That's where we're going to end uh, this one. Uh, But I'll be back in a little bit to uh, do another live stream and post some more videos. All right. I will see everyone in a minute or in a couple of hours or whatever. All right. See everybody later.